Hi and welcome to another physics lesson. This time we are taking a look at the conservation of mechanical energy. What am I talking about if I'm talking about mechanical energy? Not that difficult. Okay, mechanical energy is simply the sum of kinetic energy. Okay, kinetic energy plus potential energy. That's it. Okay. Mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy. Okay, so how does all of this come together? Well, let's look at um, a very basic scenario that we've seen so many times. I'm sure you want to puke. Okay, an object on an incline. Very helpful to understand most of these things. So there's our object. This time we are considering a force that is pulling it up the slope. So there's an applied force. We're going to call it applied force T. Okay. Then we know that there's always a weight component. Okay. So there's always a weight component that is downwards. And then there is, in this case, a normal force. Okay, so there's a normal force. It's a force that the surface is applying here. And uh, what we want to know is what is all the work? What is all the, the, the total work that's happening in this whole system? So work, okay, the net work done or the total work done would be the work done by uh, the applied force, T, let's call it WA for applied force, plus the work done by the net force, okay, so it's the work done by the net force, uh, sorry, not the net force, the normal force, okay, plus the work done by the weight force or gravity, okay, we'll call it work done by gravity. Now, from this equation, there's already a few things that you can immediately, and I really hope you can immediately see it, and um, and that's that the network done is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. Okay, so if I consider all of this work, whatever work is left over, because some of these things are going to be positive, some is going to be negative, so whatever is left over is going to change this object's velocity and therefore its kinetic energy. Okay, um, the work applied is the work applied. The work of the normal force is the normal force times uh, the displacement, let's say the displacement is delta x times cos of the angle. And what do you notice? Cos of the angle. The angle, if it's moving up the slope, which we said it was, it's moving up the slope, then the angle between the displacement of delta x and the normal force is 90 degrees. Okay, does that make sense? I'll give you a second. Good. Okay, it's 90 degrees. Now, cos of 90 degrees is zero. So, the normal force is not doing any work because it's not at all in the direction or in the opposite direction of the um, displacement. Okay. Finally, in the previous video, we learned that the work done by the gravitational force is equal to the change in potential energy. But that is when it's heading down. Okay. Remember that the work done by the weight force or the gravitational force, the component of the force that is doing work is this component. Okay, In other words, the weight that's parallel to the surface, it's in the opposite direction. In other words, it, it, the angle between this and that is 180, which means cos of 180 is negative. So this won't be positive, that would be negative. And if I now continue to just um, simplify my formula, then you notice this part is zero. So this whole term is cancelling out. And I notice then that my applied work done, okay, my applied work is equal to the change in the kinetic energy plus the change in the potential energy. Now, something that I neglected to mention, and I apologize for that, but I'm sure you were smart enough to figure it out. I've been ignoring friction. Okay, ignore friction. 
so that now in the absence of friction I can make the following interpretation so my interpretation interpretation sorry that's an I interpretation of what I'm seeing here is that the work that I apply the work applied okay changes the kinetic energy okay do you see how the work applied causes a change in the kinetic energy okay and or okay so it if there's enough work applied I can also change the potential energy okay or if I'm lifting something up and I'm doing enough work to lift it up and I'm doing more than enough work I'm also lifting it up at an increasing velocity in other words at an accelerating pace which means um, I can do either uh, change both kinetic energy and the potential energy or I can uh, change the one or the other okay so when work is applied it changes the kinetic and or the potential energy very simple um, idea okay if you do work on an object you're either going to make it go faster or you're going to lift it up or you're going to do both okay that's what it comes down to not very difficult now uh, the other thing that I want to look at is let's now imagine that there's no work applied okay so there's no applied work everything still stays the same the only difference is that the work applied is now work so it starts by writing okay this what if there is no external force acting on a system okay in other words we are not considering friction when we say no external force not considering friction the only force we are considering is the f um, f forces in the system especially gravity so if we're only considering the gravitational force um, then what's happening here the work that is being applied there's no work applied in other words work applied is equal to zero delta x cos whatever doesn't matter cos of theta and because it's zero this is just zero so there's no work applied which means that our formula comes down to this we now have that the change in the kinetic energy plus the change in the potential energy must equal zero so if I have that my kinetic energy is changing in other words my my object is slowing down it must mean that it is increasing in height because its potential energy must increase because when I add these two it must be zero okay in other words the kinetic energy changing kinetic energy is the future kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy okay and if I add to this the change in potential energy that is the future potential energy minus the initial potential energy okay and this whole sum must be equal to zero in other words I see that my kinetic energy in the future plus my potential energy in the future must equal my kinetic energy in the past the initial plus my potential energy in the past I just uh, subtracted or added this on both sides okay and that's where I got to this equation and what do you notice oh please tell me you notice this please tell me you notice that oh look at that that's mechanical energy okay mechanical energy in the future and this is mechanical energy I'm going to write it like that mechanical energy in the past okay so my initial mechanical energy and that's why we say how we get to the conservation of mechanical energy and this is the statement
The principle of the conservation of mechanical energy says therefore that in the absence of any forces other than the gravitational force, the total mechanical energy is conserved. Okay, and a very good example of this is something like a roller coaster. Okay, so there we have a roller coaster. Okay. Let's say that's our roller coaster. Then when our little cart starts way up here, okay. <laughs> okay, there's my uh, fair travelers. Okay, when it starts way up here, it is not really moving, okay, except for pushing over the ed edge. In other words, its potential, it's got a potential energy. Okay, so when it reaches right at the bottom here, now it has kinetic energy. Okay, it's full kinetic energy. And here, this kinetic energy at the bottom here must be equal to the potential energy that it had initially. Okay, that initial potential energy. And here in the middle, the potential energy plus the kinetic energy must still be the same. Initially, its kinetic energy was zero. In the end, when, or not in the end, when it's way down here, its potential energy is zero. Okay, here in the middle, it's got both potential and kinetic energy. And you can see how it increases in, uh, in velocity. It goes up, and, and all of this makes sense. Look, as it goes up, it's going to slow down until it reaches the top and then it starts increase again it goes up slows down until it reaches that height again and it falls down and it goes up and falls down uh, I, I hope you get a feel for it I, I don't know if I explained it very well um, but a roller coaster is a very good um, example of if I know at any point anything about the potential energy like the height I will be able to tell you exactly what is its velocity because I know that um, if I know originally what the height was. So if I know the height here, the mass of this object, uh, then I can work out potential energy. In other words, total mechanical energy because it was not moving yet. So it didn't have uh, kinetic energy. And therefore at any other point in the system I will be able to tell you exactly what is the velocity, what is the height, etc. Just given one of the unknowns. Cool! And um, that's me for this video. See you in the next videos where we're doing some of these examples. Cheers!